Here are my week two college football picks against the spread. And your boy is hitting at 60%. No thanks to that late backdoor cover field goal from Stanford last week. But I gave you winners from Arizona State, Wyoming, Boston College, Florida State. And I nailed my lock of the week in Notre Dame's win over Texas A&M. And remember the game I told you to stay away from? Georgia Tech, Georgia State. It took Georgia Tech scoring on fourth and goal twice for the Yellow Jackets to cover against Georgia State. And for everybody who made the mistake of doing what the Washington Post said to do and bet against Georgia Tech, don't listen to them anymore. Listen to your boy. And now let's get into this week's picks. First up, I'm taking the Tennessee Volunteers minus seven and a half in the Dukes Mayo Classic over North Carolina State. Now this might be listed as a home game, but it's a hotel stay for both teams. And Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte will probably be split 50-50 as far as the fan representation goes. Now I am a Nico E. I'm a lava believer. I had him on my Heisman watch list before the season even started. And he didn't do anything to prove me wrong against UT Chattanooga. North Carolina State's Grayson McCall has been a great college quarterback, but I have some questions about how he's going to continue to work in this North Carolina State offense. Because when McCall was at Coastal Carolina, it was about misdirection and efficiency. In his four years as a starter there, he averaged 25 pass attempts per game. But at NC State, they're going to absolutely air it out to about 35 pass attempts per game over Dave Dern's tenure. And that actually proves a lot more opportunities for mistakes and the Tennessee pass rush is going to get home. So I'm taking the volunteers by at least 10. Next up, I got Utah covering the 14 point spread at home against Baylor. Now last year, Utah went over in the Waco and beat Baylor despite being without their quarterback Cam Rising and their best tight end, Brant Keithy. And this time, the game is in Salt Lake City, which is one of the toughest places to play in all of college football. And the Ute faithful have been waiting all offseason to boo the hell out of the first Big 12 opponent that shows up at Rice Echo Stadium. Utah added a weapon at wide receiver in Dorian Singer and Dijon Stanley Kidd from right here in the Valley, proved last week with his 150 yards receiving that he's a dual threat option at running back. Now you might be wondering, well, how about Baylor? Yes, they whooped Tarleton State 45 to three, but where is Tarleton State? Now, did they look good? That's a whole different question entirely because the Quan Finn threw two picks in the game and as a team, Baylor only averaged 3.8 yards per carry. So that ain't good against Utah. And if you can't run the ball against Utah, you definitely can't average less than four yards a carry if you want to keep the ball out of Cam Rising's hands. Give me the use. My third pick this week is the Oregon Ducks minus 19 and a half against Boise State. But George, Oregon barely beat Idaho and Ashton Gentry ran for six touchdowns last week. So, <laughs> styles make fights, baby. And the team is going to grow, not from adversity, but even in a win. And in that narrow 24 to 14 Oregon win over Idaho, you had Dylan Gabriel go 41 for 49 for 380 yards and not a turnover to be found. You want to know what Boise State gave up in the passing game last week? How about 322 yards to a first time starter in JC French? And yes, Ashton Gentry is a menace at running back and Boise State's offensive line averages 6'5", 310 and blocks really, really well. But how did Oregon do against Idaho's running game? Is 20 carries for 49 yards good? How about seven tackles for loss and another four sacks? Don't let the score fool you. This Oregon team is capable of boat racing good teams. And on Saturday, I think that's exactly what's going to happen. Fourth up, I'm going to do something I usually don't do in these bets, and it's taking a point total because you need to take a serious look at grabbing the 65 and a half over in this Texas Tech Washington State game. First of all, it would be a disservice to the memory of Mike Leach for both teams not to score 40. And second, the team's combined scores from last week's openers, 100 for Washington State and 100 for Texas Tech. Washington gave up 30 to Portland State and Portland State only scored 30 plus three times last year against FCS competition. Meanwhile, Texas Tech gave up 51 points to Abilene Christian and their own former Red Raiders quarterback Maverick McIver. This game might hit 70 before the fourth quarter. 
take the over. My last pick this week and my lock of the week is Texas minus seven and a half at Michigan. Betters have driven the spread from four to seven and a half already, and that's for good reason. Michigan's passing attack against Fresno State last week was uninspiring at best. Their former walk-on quarterback, Davis Warren, talked about feeling like Michigan left meat on the bone offensively last week, but then he also added that he's felt like that all fall camp as well. So now, do we think that this offense, who's been leaving meat on the bone all fall camp, it's just going to ignite all of a sudden when the Texas Longhorns roll into town? No. <laughs> and do Michigan fans really think that Ann Arbor and the big house is going to intimidate Quinn Ewers in a way that Tuscaloosa couldn't last year? Now, I'm on the Longhorns, and you should be too. Now, the game that we all need to stay away from. Last week, I told you to avoid feeling comfortable betting one way or the other on Georgia Tech, and this week, I'm saying the exact same thing. Betters have already driven the Georgia Tech at Syracuse line from minus one to minus three in favor of the Yellow Jackets. Tech is only surrendering 200 passing yards per game, but is that only because of their stellar DB play? Or have they just faced subpar quarterbacks? Cause Tech doesn't have an interception and they also only have one sack. Now Kyle McCord quarterback over at Syracuse might just come out and dice up this team but it's also fully reasonable to expect that Georgia Tech's running game is gonna keep Syracuse's offense off the field because Ohio ran all over the Orange last week. That game could go either way, and because of that, I stay away from this one again.